Hello, and uh, welcome to this first video in the series about Sol, uh, which is a new language for real-time audio processing. Uh, I'm Daniel, I am based in Copenhagen. I'm also a recent graduate of Sound and Music Computing. And um, recently I started using Sol in September of last year for university projects, um, also for prototyping some of my own stuff. And just I just kept coming back to it for, for development and for prototyping. And so um, Josh and I decided to team up and um, I'm going to provide a couple of a couple of introductory uh, videos uh, for you to get started using Sol. Now, before we jump into any sort of syntax and design patterns and all the fun bits, um, I think it's actually useful to take a step back and look at what's already available for you and also to understand some of the intuition that Sol is attempting to promote uh, with that syntax. But if you're just getting started, then sol.dev is going to be the, the URL of your choice. In here, you have a couple of, a couple of tools and resources um, to, to write your own soul patches. If we go to the right-hand side and click on Playground, then uh, you're going to be provided with um, an online IDE as well as some example code, which if you were to compile and run it, it would output um, some like an, a melody that you are probably familiar with. Um, and then in the examples tab, you have a couple of examples, both sampling-based and MIDI-based instruments that you can try out and modify for yourself and also some audio effects that you can try out and modify for yourself as well. And then um, the most interesting thing for you right now should probably be this GitHub page, um, which is nothing but the um, which is nothing but the repository uh, where your soul lives, where you find all the source code, where you find all the binaries in case you would like to uh, download these and, um, and compile and run it yourself uh, on your local machine then this is the place to get to get started. And in a later video, we're going to cover all of that, how to set up Visual Studio Code with um, with uh, with Sol. And then the most interesting thing right here is most likely the syntax guide. If I click on that, this will take you to, to uh, a markup document, um, which uh, contains a lot of the explanations behind the syntax, what types you have, um, what structs you can use, Etc. and all the types of data structures that you can use. Um, so what we're going to do in this series is um, I'm actually going to condense all of this a bit down so that it's more um, digestible for you and that it's a bit more easy um, to follow. And then lastly, there is also a sub-channel in the Audio Programmer Discord channel that you can, that you can check out and, um, and join. Um, we're relatively active on here. Um, you can share your own patches, see if you have any questions or if you, there's something you don't understand. Um, I've been I've been mostly active there for reporting any inconsistencies that I've encountered in the online IDE, um, but it's overall a very, very friendly environment. Um, please go ahead, get, get a conversation going and um, and share your soul patches with us. Um, I, I'd be, be happy to see what you've, what you've come up with uh, so far. Um, so this is this is already um, quite a handful to get you started. Of course, in this series, we're going to dive it a bit deeper and I'm going to explain the syntax and the concepts uh, step by step. Now, as for the other part of this video, um, if we were to think about audio development in general, then I think one good way to think about it is in terms of levels of abstractions. Now, um, what do I mean by that? You might be asking. Um, what I mean by that is that you have certain high-level abstractions of uh, of audio that most people are probably familiar with. I would say that every plugin developer or everyone who's getting into the industry or into that field of interest has opened a digital audio workstation before. Um, that could be anything like Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, Reaper, Ableton. Um, please don't be mad at me if I didn't mention your favorite DW of your choice. Um, there are lots of them out there, so don't be mad. Um, but what you essentially have is you have these high-level abstractions where you just interact with floating point data on a very, very high level. And that is that you can edit them, you can play them back, you can record new um, audio files, uh, you can export them, you can modify them, you can slice them, um, all these high-level operations. And then in the next step, what we have is we have sort of intermediate level um, visual scripting style languages, something like Pure Data that I have right here with probably the most simple um, Pure Data patch that you could ever come up with. But 
it suits the purpose. So um, there are also like there are lots of lots of different libraries and frameworks out there. There's um, Max for Life if you're using uh, Ableton Live. Um, there is Max MSP. If you come from a game development background, then you might be familiar with um, with Blueprints in the Unreal Engine. And what what these frameworks provide is this sort of intuition to think in terms of in terms of processing blocks that you're using, in the sense that you have these processing units, which take some sort of input and then um, output different set of numbers. So it does some operations in here. And then similarly, these processing units also have entry points and exit points for the data to well, enter and exit. Um, we also have this sort of canvas or a graph. Um, we have this canvas where we can declare and we, where we can put our processing units. And then lastly, we have these connections which just manage um, the signal flow. And um, if you have this understanding down, if you have this understanding down of having processing units, having graphs, and having um, having these sort of connections, then um, this is the sort of intuition, this is the understanding that Sol is trying to promote. In fact, if we were to open a very, very simple, well, not a very simple, but more of a sophisticated um, example of, uh, of this reverb implementation, then if we were to compile all of this and sort of look at the source code, this might look a bit unwieldy to begin with. But if you were to click on this view audio graph, then what you're essentially seeing is the representation of, of the source code just with that visual understanding that I introduced in Pure Data right there. Um, so where we have processing units, we have our connections, uh, we have graphs. We even have graphs inside of our graphs. Um, we want to nest graphs. That is desirable, of course. And um, this is very, very useful to, to just get a very, very intuitive understanding about audio processing. And this is the intuition that Sol is trying to promote. And in fact, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to see how we can apply that concept and introduce some of the syntax in Sol to, um, to just make a very, very simple gain slider that we can use um, later on. And we can put it into practice, repurpose it in bigger applications. So I've, I hope you've gotten a bit of an understanding about how the language works, what the sort of vocabulary is in which you have to think, and what the intuition is that you have to apply when writing your soul patches. And uh, hope you enjoyed all of this. Um, again, please make sure to join this discrete uh, subchannel of Sol. And if you have some patches already lying around, then I'll be happy to, um, to see all of them. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next video and uh, take care.